Let's go. Hello, it's Len Nagati, a member of Long Island Cares and founder of Food Secure Future, a place for people of all ages and backgrounds to share ideas and learn about the most pressing food security issues. I'm here today with a special guest, Dr. Molly Anderson, who has too many accomplishments to list. But to name a few, she's the William R. Kennan Junior Professor of Food Studies at Middlebury College. She received her PhD in Systems Ecology from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. She is involved in food system reform and planning at the local, state, and regional scales, and is a member of the International Panel of Experts on Sustainable Food Systems. Hello, Dr. Anderson, and thank you for joining us today. Well, thank you for having me. So today I'd like to discuss the role of climate change on food security. And with that being said, my first question for you today is, how is climate change affecting global food security? And what are some of the key challenges it presents for ensuring access to safe and nutritious food? Well, that's a big question, but uh, we're in luck because just a couple of days ago, the UN released its most recent report called SOFI, which is the state of of world food insecurity. Actually, I think they call it now the state of world food security and nutrition, but it's still called the SOFI with an I uh, as if it's talking about insecurity. But it describes ways that food insecurity is getting worse in the world. And climate change is one of the big drivers of that worsening food insecurity. It is creating drought and floods and other uh, extreme weather occurrences that are making it very difficult for farmers to plant and harvest their crops. And we're seeing that in Vermont right now. We just had a, a major flood this week, and farmers are definitely in trouble because of that. Yeah, it's really prevalent. So my next question for you is, How does climate change intersect with other drivers of food insecurity, such as poverty, inequality, and conflicts? And what are the implications for addressing these complex challenges? Well, climate change is definitely aggravator and exacerbator of these other issues. And frequently, conflicts will be started because of a a resource dispute. For instance, uh, as water dries up, people in the area will be fighting each other, trying to figure some way that they can get water for themselves. And that water drying up is one of the consequences of climate change. So that's clearly closely related. Poverty is another issue that is intersectional with climate change. When climate change drives people away from their homes, They're displaced, they become poor because they've lost what they owned previously, and they may end up overusing resources in the place to which they move because they they don't see any alternatives. It's the only thing that they can do. So poverty is clearly another thing that is part of this nexus of issues that form a vicious spiral of poverty, climate change, displacement, resource conflict, and more climate change. Yeah, it's. I liked how you described climate change as an exacerbator for these problems, where some of them are already happening, but climate change is really speeding them up and making them more prevalent. Definitely. So my next question for you is, are there any opportunities for collaboration and knowledge sharing between different stakeholders, including researchers, policymakers, and communities to tackle climate change related food security challenges more effectively? There are plenty of opportunities for better collaboration and plenty of ways that we could be tackling climate change more effectively. Often, the researchers are presenting evidence and policymakers aren't paying sufficient attention to the evidence, just like policymakers have not paid sufficient attention for decades to the evidence that climate change is coming, it's getting worse and worse, it's speeding up, and unless we do something drastic, it's going to continue. So the policymakers need the researchers in order to monitor different interventions, and the researchers need the policymakers to actually make policies that will stimulate change on the part of communities 
give them incentives, sometimes the financial means to implement changes. So all of these parts should be working together more effectively than they are now. And it's really discouraging to see the ways in which they fail to collaborate. Yeah. So how do you think we would be able to collaborate with these policymakers better? Well, I'm hoping that the increasing urgency of climate change will drive policymakers to see that they can't delay any longer. And honestly, I think many of the effects of climate change are already locked in. It's too late to implement some of the solutions that we could have implemented two decades ago, even one decade ago. It's too late, but we can still be helping communities to adapt better and to try to do some of the things that will mitigate climate change. For instance, farming communities could be switching over to agroecology, which builds up soil fertility and builds up the the water holding capacity of the soil so that when floods come, they aren't quite as devastating. And when droughts come, agroecology demands that or expects that farmers have some kind of cover crop or or, uh, something on the soil all the time, which helps to protect the soil from baking heat. And something like mulch will help protect it from drying out during droughts. In a really severe drought, that's not going to be sufficient, but at least it, it will help during periods of dryness. Yeah. Implementing those strategies is very important for combating. Absolutely. And that's where communities come into play, whether it's communities of residents who need to be driving less and getting on their bicycles or walking or and also helping to support policymakers who are making the right kinds of policy, even if they make life a little more difficult for consumers in that city. People are very reluctant to change their behavior, but we absolutely must change our behavior in order to prevent the very worst results of climate change. Yeah, you're so right. So my final question for you today is, what role does policy and governance play in addressing the impact of climate change on food security? Well, I would say governance, we've talked a bit about policy already, but governance is really important. And by governance, I think of decision-making and who has the power to actually come together and speak about what their circumstances are, what they need, what they expect from government or people who bear the duty of respecting, protecting, and fulfilling people's human rights. So with governance, it's really important that the people who are being affected by policies have a voice in uh, governance, that it's not a kind of top-down, expert-driven policy, but that they are listening to the people who are affected, allowing those people to evaluate any interventions that are put in place, and then working with those people to make it possible for them to improve interventions. And that's been a problem with governance in the past, that experts, scientists, sometimes uh, government officials will come in and tell people what to do. And that's just, it doesn't work well. We saw that not too long ago in the Netherlands, where farmers were being told that they had to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions and the farmers rose up protest. I would say, yes, they do need to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions, but the government should have been working closely with the farmers to figure out how that can be done most effectively instead of just setting a policy that says you've got to reduce your emissions. Yeah, it's very important to give everyone a voice in these scenarios. That's true. Yeah. All right. That's it for me. Thank you.